Hey guys and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. This is number 18 in the first steps and preparation series. And today we are going to start covering the notes in the compositor. So let's open up Blender and let's open up the file we worked on last time. Um, first thing you can do is just delete all the notes in between. Uh, all the color balance notes, we don't need them. With Ctrl X you can delete them. And then let's just move those two over here. Like this. And actually today we will only talk about the render layers node. Because if you go to Shift A to add new nodes, you can see you have input and then you have actually seven of them. Um, and today we're only going to talk about render layers. Don't worry, um, in future tutorials we'll, t we'll cover more than just one node per tutorial. But uh, render layers is kind of special. Because um, we talked about render layers before, if you remember, and that was when covering the render properties, okay? Because under render properties, you've got um, a chapter called layers. And let's just minimize all the other sub windows except for layers. And let's take a look at what we can do here. Um, and in order to do that, let's just restructure our viewport a little bit. Let's just move that up there that up there and let's just go to a 3d view over here okay you can see each of those objects are on their layer right now all the objects are in the exact same layer on layer one and but you can reposition them wherever you want you can for example grab those four um, hit the M button and then just move them to the second layer now you can see they're gone but if you shift select the second layer then everything is shown again okay um, this is, as I said before, a good way to organize your scene. However, it doesn't really affect how your scene is rendered unless you deselect certain layers, okay? Because only the layers you have selected right here are actually being rendered. So if I only select the first one, if I hit F12, then you can see it only rendered that part of your scene. Pretty cool. Um, but not what we want. What would be cool though, um, it would be pretty cool if we could separate those, what we did as we did just now, and if we could now in the compositor manipulate or influence those four blocks separately from those over here, okay? So, um, yeah, today we're going to look take a look at how you can do that. You can see layers, okay? And then you can see a couple of layers over here. You can just add new layers or delete layers. And you can rename them. For example, we can call this one... Um, blocks underline left and then let's just call those one blocks underline right okay uh, that was wrong okay but right now nothing will happen because um, we have two render layers but both render layers render everything okay so here we can see um, two times uh, 20 um, boxes each representing a layer okay and you can see under scene you've got the exact same selection as you have down here in the layers and that's because whenever you select something over here it selects it over here as well um, I'm not quite sure why that is it's possible probably so that you always know what layer you're on when you're actually selecting your the layers that are actually being rendered onto that render layer because here is all here happens all the magic right now our blocks left onto our blocks left layer all the layers get rendered and same for blocks right but we don't want that okay usually you go like this you have like a main layer or that's how I usually do it you have a main layer and on that main layer by default all the layers are checked and then you have all the um, separate other layers now for blocks right we know that we only want this layer to be rendered onto this this blocks right so we only select the second layer okay and right now, let's just make a short test render with F12. Okay, you can see not much happened. Over here, we still have um, one render layer input, one viewer and one composite. And you can see the output is still the same as before. But down here, in the render layers node, you can select between the layers. And if you go to right, you can see only um, the things on this second layer are actually being displayed okay but um, in order for that to be useful you actually have to mask them out on your 
other render layer, okay? And the way we do that is quite simple. We just go to blocks left over here and we just deselect with shift left click the second layer. And now if we have 12, you can see that's what you get. You get a blocks left, which is only that. You can see the shadows and so, and, and so on are still being rendered. However, the objects themselves, they disappear. And now we we can we have them separately, okay? And um, yeah, now there are several ways how you can combine them afterwards, but that will actually be covered in one of the next tutorials because that will be under color, okay? Those notes, the mix note in particular. Uh, more on that later. Um, for now, let's just see how we can separate layers. Okay, that's all nice and dandy, and now you can ob obviously see you can separate uh, that scene into how many render layers you want, you can, yeah, you can just recreate or, or split your scene into different layers and then recombine them and work on every part or every separate layer separately, which is the goal of this. Now, there are also a few other, other things you can do. And one very cool thing is mask layers, okay? So right now you can see, um, actually, let's just rearrange this a little bit. Let's move... those two blocks back to layer one like this and now you can see uh, if we render this uh, you can see on our second layer on our layer a render layer blocks right we only have those two blocks and on blocks left we've got all the others okay and um, um, and there are situations where you want it so that on your blocks right, um, the area where something's in front of those blocks is being masked out, okay? And you can do that with mask layers. And now let's just go to blocks right. And let's think about what we, what we want to have that masks our blocks right. And we want it to be our first layer, this one over here. And now if we have 12, you can see there's something missing here and that is exactly what's actually in front of that other render layer and this way you've got a very clean and anti-aliased um, anti-aliased um, mask so to say okay cool now um, that's what the mask layers are for now this is also pretty cool um, let's just do something with our scene here. Let's move that to over there. Let's go to top view, orthographic with five. Let's duplicate this a couple of times. Okay, now this is going to look quite ridiculous, but that doesn't matter. Let's just change the color as well. Let's change the color of that thing there to red and the color of the one over here. We're going to change that to green. Okay, now hit F12 and you get something like, not that. Uh, oh, one other thing. Um, you have to make sure that the lamps are actually on both layers. I'm not sure if I t told you that already, but you can have objects on several layers, okay? You can now hit M. Then you can see you have all the lamps on the first layer, and now with shift left click, you can also put it on the second layer. And now they actually affect things on the first and the second layer. F12 again. And here we go. Um, as I foresaw that already, it looks ridiculous, but that is all right. And now let's go to blocks left again. Okay, so right now you can see uh, the lighting from red, green, something in front of the scene, and yellow as before. Now with those um, two fields over there, you can actually replace all the lights or, or all the materials with a different one. Now, in order to select a light, you need to have a light in a group, okay? So let's just select this light. Let's go to Control g and you can see this lamp is in a group. It is in a group with only itself, which is a bit sad, but it doesn't really matter. And now, over here, you can select that group. And now, if you have 12, you can see... Oh, that was the wrong one. But now you can see, um, we set 
group only for blocks right we should have set it for blocks left doesn't matter blocks right now you can see if we go to blocks right it once again appears as it did before because now it's only lit um, by this group of lamps which is only this lamp and the others are ignored okay and that is good if you want to make a short test with only a certain light or something or yeah if you only want to see how one certain light source affects the scene then you can just um uh yeah cancel the others out for a certain amount of time and then you can also change the materials okay um now we did not yet talk about materials but let's just do it anyway let's select those three blocks let's go to materials let's change the material to red okay like this then let's select the others well not quite the best workflow here um let's hit let's hit the plus over here so we have a new material uh, as i said i'm going to show you how to use those functions more in depth in the later tutorial but just so we have something here let's hit Control l and this way you can link the materials so now all the different objects have the same material and now let's just make that to something blue okay and right now if i hit f12 You can see if we go to our blocks left, you can see we've got, well, actually only one red one because there's on, on the other render layer and four blue, five blue blocks, okay? And that's how, it's, how, it usually is in, how it usually is in scenes. You've got different objects and most of the time, uh, most of them have different materials, okay? But you can, if you want, you can replace all the materials with... Um, with a, th with, with a uh, substitute material and that is good to really see how your light sources affect everything okay because if, especially if you have very dark objects then it gives off the impression as if they were lit less strongly than the others and by replacing all the materials with the same material with another material then you don't have the problem okay so let's just um, select the material here but let's just make a new one let's just make another one let's just turn into something yellow like this and by the way um, by default the first material you created is selected for the whole object and if you want then to assign certain vertices to other materials you have to do that you have to do that manually but more on that later i just want to tell you with that that this yellow material will not be considered usually you can see if we have 12 nothing appears yellow okay but we can now over here select that yellow material as the substitute material for all the other, uh, for all the materials. And now if we have 12, once again, the wrong word la uh, render layer, my fault, let's go to blocks left and put that in, F12. And now you can see everything is yellow and everything is ugly, but you can see um, what effect it has, okay? And now if you want to see just how the lighting really affects the scene, then the best way to go is to use a completely white standard material, as we basically did before. And then you can also see what kind of color um, the lamps cost, because yeah, it's all, everything's on a white background, or, or yeah, on, the, on a white base. Um, okay, so then the next thing is include. Now here we can actually, um, you know what, let's just delete that second render layer, we don't need it for now, and let's recheck that so we only have one layer. It's easier to work with and less confusing. Okay, and now let's also delete this material, this replacement material. And... <coughs> That looks much better. Now, um, with include, you can actually include the things that are supposed to be rendered, okay? So, um, if you uncheck solid, then the solid faces will no longer be rendered. This is not something you usually want because it would look like this. Nothing's there because all those faces are actually solid, okay? Um, and then there's halo. We did not yet talk about halos, but uh, halos are kind of like... Um, something you can achieve with particles, like shiny, star-like objects. They are a bit outdated for most things, but you can still use them in some cases. Uh, anyway, um, if you have halos in your scene, this has to be checked. It is 
also checked by default. Then seed transparency. Um, if you you can also under materials make certain faces transparent, and then you can with this uh, button you can decide whether they actually rendered in, tra in a transparent mode or not. Um, usually you want this to be checked because you on purpose set up the the seed transparent um, faces in the material settings anyway. Then you have sky, and that is just if you have like let's just render this again. Okay, now everything, um, just a second here, let's select that, let's give it a new material, let's make, material, let's make a material a dark gray so it actually shows in the render, F12. Okay, much better. Now everything behind those blocks and behind this plane is considered as the sky, okay? And right now it is white and it is being rendered as a white sky because over here we have a horizon color of a light blue actually, but yeah, it, it kind of appears to be completely white. Now, if we uncheck sky, then you can see it is now black, okay? And, yeah, then we also have edge. And with uh, edge, you can just... If you have that checked, and if you under performance, no, under shading, no, under post-processing, exactly. If under post-processing, post you select edge, then if you render this, then you get this cartoony um, effect where your edges appear um, black, okay? And if you uncheck edge, then th that, that no longer happens, okay? And this way you can actually, if you have a second layer, you can also choose this option over here, and this way you can have certain layers where this effect is actually applied and certain layers where it is not applied. Okay. Um, let's also uncheck edge down here and let's just close the post processing and then strand um, strand rendering is actually the rendering of particle hair okay so in order to demonstrate that let's just set up a very simple particle system because we did not yet cover that let's go to particle system let's click on plus let's change that to hair and then let's go to f12 And you can see there are hairs all over the place. Okay, and now if I have strand checked, then strands are actually going to be rendered in my scene, and if not, not. Now, um, those are hair part particles, so they are not automatically strands. In order for them to be strands, you have to go to the render settings of the particle system. Uh, as I said, more on that later, so really don't, don't, don't feel bad if you don't know this stuff yet. But then under render, let's just minimize the others. Under render, you can activate strand render. This is a much, much faster way to render your hairs, because sometimes you really have a lot of thousands of hairs, which can take a lot of CPU power, which has a lot of render time, and therefore you can activate this strand render. Um, it's less high quality, but it takes it's much, much, much faster. And if you have that checked, and if then you uncheck strand, or if you check strand, then you can see it renders it, and it appears a little bit differently than before. Okay? And if you uncheck that, um, your strands disappear completely because they are no longer being rendered. Um, okay, so let's just delete our particle system as well. And then let's just leave it like this. Okay, and then let we come to the passes, which is a really big deal. Um, we will talk about more about them in the next few tutorials because we will actually uh, come across nodes that only work when certain things over here are being checked. But you can see one thing already. Right now, um, from these render layers, I have three passes, three sockets, image, alpha, and C. And you can see if I uncheck C, it disappears over here as well. But now I can also check vector, normal, UV, mist, object index, and so on, and so forth. And um, you can use those things to separate your render layer into different um, images and then recombine them later on, and this way you can do it so that you can only manipulate um, certain images or certain parts of an image without affecting the other parts. And therefore, passes are very, very important. For example, you can exclude the shadow pass. Or not, not exclude, you can actually make it so it creates a separate shadow pass, okay? And right now, if I check, if I put input shadow into the image in the viewer, you can see it's black because we did not yet, we did not yet render it. But now if we render it, then you can see 
we have a separate shadow pass, okay? Which is basically a white image <coughs> of all the objects, and then just the, um, the shadows are on top of that, so you can now uh, multiply it onto another image to add the shadows afterwards. And that's just one uh, example. What you can also do, you can also click this ex exclude over here, okay? And now it actually gives you a separate shadow pass, and at the same time it excludes the shadows from your original render. Okay, so if we hit F12, you can see. On this layer we only have the shadows, and on the other one we only have the objects without the shadows, okay? And in order to just very quickly show you what you can, how you can recombine them, just add in a mix node, more on that in a future tutorial by the way, add in the shadows over there, and you can see you've got it all back together. Now we've got a few issues over there, and um, that can happen sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to deal with those in a later tutorial. But yeah, that's, that's basically um, how this works. Um, so yeah, you learned how to, what, la what render layers are, how they are different from layers, um, how to set them up, what to do with the different options. And um, then one last thing, I forgot to cover that a few minutes ago, is CMask, CMask negate, which is now not checkable because we didn't check it, CMask and all C, okay? So um, let's start with, with CMask. Right now if I check CMask on the render layer and if I have 12, and you can see it changes nothing on our blocks left layer, but on the render layer you can see nothing, okay? And that's because with this option it says only render what's in front of the solid C values, okay? And with solid C values it means if you check a mask layer, okay? For example, let's check the first one as a mask layer, then only those pixels that are actually in front of something from the first layer, okay? So if you look at this first layer, you can see all those objects. And whenever there's something in front of one of those objects on the second layer, then that part of that object on the second layer is being rendered, okay? So if we check both layers again, you can see in this case, only that part over here is actually in front of something on this layer, okay? Because we have our ground plane, and then that part of the second layer here, about that part, is in front of the plane, then the rest is again behind this cube or this block, and therefore only this part will be rendered. So let's see what that looks like. And you can see, as expected, that it's this part over here. And um, you can use that, for example, if as a mask, okay? Now, um, for example, if you have grass, and you want to create a mask of grass that can then be composited onto another object because it is quite um, difficult to achieve that with other combining methods, then you could use C mask. Okay, you can also use negate. And now it's the other way around. Only those values that are actually behind something on the first layer, which means that part over here, would be rendered from the second layer. Okay, and that would look like this. Okay, and it's actually only this small part over here, so it's this small part over here, because everything outside that part is not behind something from the second layer, and everything below that part is maybe behind this block, but it's still in front of the plane, so yeah, it's a bit tricky, and looks a bit weird. And the reason we have those two black planes, so to say, is because you can see uh, the two blocks are actually not just touching the surface, they're actually... Um, there's also part of them below the surface and that part is actually being rendered. So, um, yeah. And then a very handy tool as well is all C. Now, you might remember that... Um, let's just do it like this, without C mask, and then it's actually a perfect mask, as, we sh as, we, as I showed you before. You have now this part masked out. Now, if we uncheck that, because let's say we have a lot of different render layers and lots of things we want to mask, let's just check all C, and now automatically all the all the layers that there are will automatically be masked, be used as a mask for this layer. Okay, so this way it creates the exact same result, like this. Um, 
Okay, and um, the difference between that and that is that here we can actually select what layer is used as a mask, and with this it just uses all the layers um, as a mask. Um, okay, and then one last thing is over here you can see we can not only change render layers, but we can also change the scene. Okay, and um, if, if we change the scene up here, let's just add a new scene. Scene 001. You can see we once again have the render layers uh, reset it. I showed you that by the way in a previous tutorial called Scene Properties. And I think that's what it was called. And now if we switch back to scene, you can see our previous scene. And yeah, and you can also now uh, select scene over here, 001 over here and then add the render layer. And yeah, this way you can combine things from different scenes in your compositor. Um, okay, this is once again a half hour tutorial. Um, I hope it made sense. It's a bit difficult to explain since we did not yet cover the other parts of the compositor, but they will follow within the next few tutorials. So I hope you learned something. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have any ideas or if you think something isn't okay or whatever, post it in the comments. Um, I'm always eager to learn new things. So thank you for watching and see you next time.